Prince Winner. You're watching the Women's Rugby Show and I hope to see you here at the weekend. Hello, 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 hello and welcome back to the Women's Rugby Show. I'm Sam Barlow and today I'm going to be giving you a little bit different player previews episode. We speak to four different players from the games taking place in the women's game this weekend. And that is of course the two Allianz Premier 15 semi-finals. We will be off to the Twickenham Stoop to see Harlequins women taste on Wasps ladies. So we've spoken to two Quinns players taking part in that game. There's also Loughborough Lightning against Saracens women. We've spoken to two players from that game as well. But before we get into the video, make sure you like this video on YouTube, subscribe to us on YouTube as well as we aim to reach a thousand subscribers, and also check us out across all social medias. If you don't know that, well, let's get into the video. First of all, Sarah, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, first of all, how are you? How have you been doing? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Um, good to finally be back from injury and be playing again and um, getting back to, to doing, doing what we all want to do. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, how was that comeback from injury and all the recovery from it? Um, yeah, it was probably one of the toughest bits of my rugby career so far, to be honest. Um, hurt my neck back in November, um, spent four months rehabbing and then came back to play again and got injured in the first minute of my first game back um, with a different issue, um, causing me to miss miss the Six Nations campaign. And um, yeah, that was, that was pretty difficult, but just happy to be back and um, back for the business end of the season, which is always good. How tough was it to miss that Six Nations and obviously quite a successful Six Nations for England? You were around the camp, but how tough is it to miss the actual game day, game days? Yeah, it's, it's quite tough, to be honest. Um, all you train for, all you work for is to go and play for your country. And, you know, I'm absolutely delighted for the girls. Um, wanted them to win and everything else. But yeah, it's quite hard to not be in that. But um, just gave everything I could to the camp and um, was supportive as I could be. Well, supportive um, of everything that they were doing, and I knew that they had it in them to go and win. So yeah, I was really, really happy for the girls to go in. Obviously, you came back for that weird game away in France. What that was must have been a bit of an odd, odd evening, odd, odd couple of days for all the girls in the England camp. Yeah, it's strange. Um, I got on the field for a grand total of seven seconds. So. Um, before the lights went out so yeah um, that was my comeback from injury it's not definitely not what I envisioned but um, I, I don't really know what to say to be honest um, it's one of those things you can't change it it's happened um, so there's not too much use in thinking about it um, but yeah very strange um, and hopefully we don't have to go for anything like that again and obviously going on to why you're here why you're chatting to us this weekend um, the Premier 15 semi-finals, Wasps at home with a crowd back. How excited are you to be back playing in front of a home crowd this weekend? Oh, so excited. It's been a long, long time. The last time we were in front of a crowd um, was actually at the Stoop um, playing England versus Wales. Um, and that was a great day. And hopefully we can have a day like that um, on Saturday and hopefully come out with the right result. But regardless of that we're just so happy to see fans back um we've missed having people at the side of the pitch so much it means the world was that they're back um so hopefully we'll be able to go put on a good show how's the preparation been for Quinns going into this week obviously all you've had all your England girls away they're all coming back in how has that been how's everyone blended back together yeah, I think everyone's just straight into mind on Quinns and straight back into the grind of it, really. Um, we've had a couple of training sessions this week and, um, yeah, they're, they're going pretty well and we're quite happy with the prep that we're putting in. So it's just about translating that prep onto onto the field and getting that performance that we know we can put out. Obviously, this season's been quite a, a different one for Premier 15s wise. We've been used to yourselves and Saracens being quite dominant, but this year everybody seems like they can be anyone in this top four. How dangerous do you think Wasps are this weekend? Oh, massively dangerous. I don't think you can underestimate them at all. They've got a forward pack who are really coming to life now, really, really taking the ball on, um, aggressive, physical, want to bring it to you. And then they've got a fantastic back line, really encapsulated by that back three. Um, they're so fast, so elusive and so powerful. Um, so there's threats all over the pitch. You know, Meg Jones is running the show. So we're going to have to be be on top of our game at all points um, and with every position because um, there's threats all over the place. Do you think Meg's their main danger? Obviously, you mentioned her there, but do you think she's their main danger to yourselves? Um, I wouldn't say main danger. I think their main danger is having dangers everywhere. Um, we have to mark everything. And, you know, you, you've seen some great passages of play from them this year. Their offloading game is really good. Um, and then Meg, obviously, 
there's no secret that she does run run that show for them and um we're gonna have to try and nullify what she can do um but yeah it's a tough task isn't it so how tough has it kind of been preparing for them obviously they've got a fair few sevens girls away how tough has it been not really knowing what they're gonna have playing out on saturday um, to be honest, I don't think we look so much at individuals. I think we look at passages of play and phases of play and patterns within their game. I think that um, that takes that individual um, individual like people who are going to make differences. Obviously, they've got those those star players who are going to come and have individual greatness within that. But um, we have to take them as a team. And if those players are playing for them, great, that's another challenge. And if they're not, then we, we adapt to that. But we're not too focused on absolute individuals. Obviously, we're aware of key individuals, but um, it's more about how we can break them down as a team more than anything. How much are you looking forward to getting out on that pitch and hopefully getting to another final and then fingers crossed for yourselves winning a final and beating Saracens, potentially? Yeah, I've never been in this position. I've never even played in a... Premier 15 semi-final so um, just going out there and enjoying enjoying the occasion um, and then like you say hopefully get the win um, you know I'm really confident in the side I think we've got a great side I think if we play to the best of our ability we should be able to get the the result that we want but that's the that's the key thing isn't it whether we can play to that level and um, get the result that we want but it's just so excited to get back out of the suit in front of crowds have family there I think that's the main thing players have been missing having family around after the game, in the game, cheering for us. So, yeah, it's going to be a great occasion. Just can't wait to get out there. And obviously, it was announced um, last week about BT covering the final. There's also bits of the semi-final. How important do you think that is to the women's game to have one of the main rugby broadcasters in the UK broadcasting the top level of women's rugby? No, I think it's huge. Um, I think especially as they're putting it on free-to-air as well, um, within it being a, pay a paywall channel, Um I think just more coverage is all we can ask for. And, you know, we've got, got good, experienced people at BT um, giving us a platform and hopefully the guys who are in the final, whether that's us or not, can put on a great show and really showcase what women's rugby is and hopefully we can attract some more viewers. And obviously the league this season has been massively competitive, more so than it has been in the past few years. How important do you think that is to the growth of not just the Red Roses, but just the game as a whole in England? Yeah, I think more competitive games makes for more interesting viewing. Um, I think people will want to watch a bit more if there's closer games, tighter games, nail biters. You know, you see Quinn's men at the moment winning in the last last minutes for like two games apart from the one previously. And that makes people want to watch. It's exciting to watch. Um, and people want to see those big, big rivalries and those big um, games where it's really tight. So I think that's going to be really good for for trying to drive the game forwards and you know like you say it, it drives people to be better because if there's closer games you're probably a little bit more motivated to go out and train and lift lift heavier weights and all that sort of stuff to make sure you get the win so yeah and finally for me before i let you go and enjoy the rest of your day where do you think the game's going to be won and lost on saturday against wasps um i think in the forwards potentially I think it's difficult because I think we're probably a more forwards dominant side and they're probably a more backs dominant side but I think if we can really take it to them in the forwards and um, make make their life a bit a bit difficult uh, we should be able to get get over the line but you know it's going to be tight whatever it is so I, I can't call it to be honest. Perfect Sarah thanks a lot for joining us and good luck Perfect. for this weekend as well. Thank you. First of all, Letitia, thanks a lot for joining us. First of all, how are you? How have you been in the last couple of days? Um, very fresh, actually. Uh, we've taken a different approach the past two weeks, prepping for the semis. We've gone a more like deload so that we can be as fresh as we can on Saturday, whereas normally it's like a medium, a low or a high intensity. But this week, it's like very, very low. <laughs> How much have you enjoyed the preparation going into Saturday's game? Uh, I think I've enjoyed it so much. Like, I think I've been in the Prem three years, but I've never been to a semi-final. I've always been, like, in the lower teams, knocked out before we got there. Or last year, obviously, we probably would have got there, but then COVID. <laughs> um, but I think all the girls are enjoying it. So I think... Definitely exciting. How have you found this season on a whole for Love Brighton and yourself? Adam? How have you found this season as a whole for Love Brighton for yourself? Um, 
think the season as a whole has been quite a roller coaster because there's been a mixture of players that have dipped in and out of the squad. Um, we've got loads of internationals that some some weeks they're there, other weeks they're not there. Um, some people within the wider squad stepping up. And I think having that many people available to train every week is just so good for development. And development is probably the biggest word I'd use across this year. You found coming back into the Loughborough environment after spending so long away with the Red Roses during the Six Nations? <laughs> I think it was really fun actually to come back to club because when we was in the Six Nations and we was in that bubble, we literally saw the same people for like two or three months. And then coming back and seeing the teammates that sometimes you've not seen for like eight weeks, it was just really nice. And I think like how welcoming everyone was to have everyone back. And then the standard that we all trained at, it like it has been great, which shows that the girls have been putting in work like on and off the pitch whilst we've been away. How tough is it to kind of prepare for a team like Saracens who've got so much quality across the pitch? I think there's more pressure on them than there will be on us because at the moment like we've got nothing to lose. And for them, they've got everything to lose because they've won it the past two years. So I think it's hard to get to the top, but it's even harder staying. So I think the prep, like for us, is just to control what we can control and go, in, go into that game with nothing to lose. Where do you feel their biggest kind of weapon to their game is in their performance? Is it specific? specific uh, specific player to you you feel as their biggest weapon? Um, and they're like a force to be reckoned with, especially when they play together. But I think also in the back line, they've got like Hatton, um, Holly Aitchison, Lottie Clapp. So I think it's just not giving these players space or if we keep the ball then they won't have a chance to kind of get on top of us. Where do you think the game will be won and lost on Saturday? I think the game will be won or lost within the last like five minutes because I think in big games like this it always comes down to the very fine moments where it's like two minutes to go and the refs give a penalty away or something like that. Obviously, there's crowds back on the weekend as well across both semi-finals. How nice is it to have those crowds back after so long away? It'll be really nice to have people like there supporting both teams. And I think noise is all going to hear, like white noise, <laughs> especially in um, Alice Radio, because mm. when you play there, you shout something and it echoes. So to have all the players on the pitch shouting and then players in the... Um, not players, fans in the stadium. It's <laughs> so noisy. Mm. And obviously, um, the final, if you get there, hopefully, is going to be on BT. And so there's more coverage coming. How important do you think that is for the growth of the game? Obviously, the last round of fixtures were all live streamed as well. How important do you think that is? Well, I think um, it's really important to stream not just women's rugby, but like all women's sport in general, because I think for young girls, that want to aspire to play like sports, if they don't see other girls playing it, that they can kind of, what's the word, like relate to, then it's hard for them to aspire to be that. Like if someone said to me when I was in primary school, oh, what do you aspire to be when you grow up? I would have never said a rugby player because I didn't know anything about it. It was never on TV. But I think now you ask young um, girls, and they'd probably say, oh, I want to play a football or I want to play rugby or netball and stuff like that. So I think it's really important that the coverage gets out there. And I think um, having the coverage out there, but being able to find it as well, because sometimes it's it's like stream, but it's so hard to find that in the end, people are just like, oh, it's too hard. <laughs> and obviously the league's been really competitive this season. Anyone seems to be able to beat anyone. Do you think that's also great for the league and great for the growth of the game? 
I, yeah, I believe it's um, really massive for the game because I think it shows the talent across the whole league. Um, and I think it challenges um, it challenges the top four teams, where it used to be like the same four teams, where now literally anyone could have got into the top four this past year. And I think the challenge is so good because it makes players better, it makes teams better. And finally, before I let you get on with the rest of your day, how much are you just looking forward to getting out there on Saturday? Um, so much. <laughs> <laughs> Counting down the hours. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Feels like Th forever. Yeah. Th thanks a lot for joining us, chatting to me today. Uh, massive look, good luck for the weekend on Saturday, and fingers crossed you can get through to that final. Thank you. No worries. First of all, Sophie, thanks a lot for joining us. First of all, how are you? How have you been in the last couple of weeks? It's been good. It's been a bit odd not having that many games. We've had a few big game breaks with the Six Nations and stuff. So I'm just excited to get back to having some, hopefully, back-to-back -back games if we can do our job this weekend. How tough was that little break for the Six Nations? So you obviously, Saracens had a fair few players playing across the, across the countries. How tough is it to be not really having much doing training and game-wise? It's frustrating to to train the full week and not have not have any sort of reward for it on the weekend. But it was also really exciting to cheer on um, our teammates that were playing, and we had great performances across the board. But especially the English girls winning the Six Nations and and Poppy getting Player of the Tournament. So there was still lots to cheer for on the weekends. <laughs> How nice is it to see people like Poppy um, being rewarded for such not, such fine performances across that Six Nations? Oh, it's great. It's um, especially coming from Canada, where we don't really have like a Six Nations, obviously, type tournament. It's really neat to see um, how well presented the tournament is over TV as well. And then to have big awards like that going out to players who deserve them. It's just I think it was really well done and it was exciting to watch. And how have you found this kind of Premier 15 season as a whole after coming over from Canada and kind of the difference between playing over there and playing over here? Yeah, I think the the quality of this league is is really incredible just across the board. So you have the top talented players, like a lot of the home nations, internationals and stuff, but then just the quality of your um, of your other club players, like your non-internationals is so high here. And uh, I think that just makes the league really competitive across the board. Um, I know there's been like a few seasons where series have have um, not run away with it a bit, but had had some big score lines. And I think this season's been um, pretty competitive. And and so I'm happy that it's one that I've been a part of. Mm. Yeah, how have you um, found Saracen's performances across the season? Obviously, you mentioned it's been a lot more competitive than it has been in recent years. But how do you think the team's gone, kind of as a whole across the season? Yeah, I think we've definitely had some ups and downs, and and some moments of of showing what we could be, and other moments where things just weren't clicking. I still don't think that we've had a game where we fired on all cylinders for a full full seventy. I guess. Um, so hopefully we can put that performance together this weekend. It feels like in our prep, things are starting to click a bit more. Um, we've gotten back with, uh, to integrating all the home internationals that were away for Six Nations. So I think, um, yeah, like I said, I think we'll be firing on all cylinders this weekend, but it hasn't quite, we haven't quite had that performance yet this year. How um, tough is a prep being a prepping for Loughborough? Obviously, all the top four have had good results against each other. They've all been strong against each other. How much have you been able to prepare for Loughborough this weekend? Uh, well, we're fortunate in that we knew um, that we would see them in the semis quite a few weeks ago. So even before our last league game against Worcester. Um, so we've had quite a bit of time to wrap our heads around it and do film review. Um, watch them play in their last league game so uh, yeah like I said we've had a lot of time to get mentally there and um, now it's time to ramp up and get excited about it. Where do you think their kind of biggest dangers to beating you lie on the weekend? They're a really dynamic team um, they like to punch and play out the back so we're gonna have to be aware of their speedsters through the back line and, and their kicking ability as well. Um, and then through their forwards, they've caused us a lot of trouble at the breakdown. So we really need to be 
be sure that we're being vigilant there and committing enough numbers to the breakdown and, and being aware of, of their threats in and around there. So those are two spots for sure. And, 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 where, do, and where do you think the game will be won and lost on the weekend as well? Probably, I would imagine, in the, in the physical, whichever team can be more physically dominant, that'll get you the go forward that you need. I mean, I'm forward, so I like to, <laughs> that's a typical answer. But um, I think if we can be physically dominant through our forwards and then um, have good game management um, with our kicking game and our exits through the backs, that we um, that whichever team does that should be the one that comes in on top. And finally, for me, before you can get off and enjoy the rest of your day, um, obviously the game is in front of crowds. On uh, the next two games, are in front of crowds. Hopefully, if you get to the final, how yeah. exciting is that? To, that for you to be back playing in front of a crowd. I'm pumped. I haven't played a game at Stonex or even in the league yet in front of crowds in the Premier 15. So this weekend will be my first time getting to play in front of a crowd with the series jersey on. So that's pretty exciting. But just in general, I haven't been able to play or none of us have been able to play a game in front of crowds in probably at least a year. So um, to have that experience and um, we got a bit of a taste of it seeing the series boys last night um, run out in their in their match. So I'm definitely eager to get out there and hopefully we get a good showing. Perfect. So Sophie, thanks a lot for joining us. Hopefully you get that result against Luffer at the weekend and we'll see you in the final and just with good luck for this weekend. Thanks so much, Sam. No worries. First of all, Beth, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, hope you're well. First of all, how have you been? How have you been? How's training been the last couple of weeks? Um, yeah, I've been good. It's obviously like an exciting time um, with the semi-finals coming up. So training's been intense, but the atmosphere and the mood and the energy's been like really high. It's been on point. It's been like where we want it to be leading into the knockouts. And how nice has it been having all obviously the England girls coming back into camp after a successful Six Nations? What's the mood kind of like between all the girls? Yeah, I think they've like they've brought the energy back. They've obviously all of us that weren't there are really proud of them and like that trophy and stuff, it's an accomplishment for them. So I think like that's boosted our morale and our energy and it's put us on like a high to go into the semi-finals with them them coming back raring to go. Yeah. Kind of looking at the season so far, how do you think it's gone from a Harlequin's perspective and for yourself from a personal perspective? Um, I think as a Quinn's perspective, I think there's definitely been like highs and lows. Um, the lows are something that we've definitely worked on and we've took a lot of like lessons and learnings from them. Um, so I think without them lows, we probably wouldn't have learned or got to where we are now. So I think all of it is a part of the journey. And I think if you asked any of the girls, we've really enjoyed this season and fingers crossed, we can top it off, top it off with a good, good ending. Um, as a personal viewpoint, I think my season, I think coming back into the 15s game, I've definitely developed and having the chance to come back into 15s and, to develop this avenue of rugby for myself as well has been huge for me. And it's hopefully in the long run, it's only going to make me a better, more versatile player. Yeah. Have you found that tra tra uh, transition back into the 15 games difficult? Um, I think a lot of, if you ask a lot of people, like transitioning from 15s to 7s, fitness wise is brutal. Like, I haven't done anything harder in my life, but just like structure wise and learning different aspects of the game it being more physical obviously like longer longer periods of play and that um I think that is quite hard to come back into and like start striding with it but fingers crossed I've got the hang of it it's nearly the end of the season so if I haven't yet then <laughs> yeah, obviously um the Premier the last couple of seasons the Premier 15 has very much been Harlequin Saracens on top but this season it's been very much anyone can be anyone especially in the top four so do you think that's made it a lot more competitive and a lot more enjoyable to watch as well yeah I think that's what we've all wanted like knowing that every game we're having to run out and fight and be in for a good game of rugby is what everyone wants even sometimes it does come with 
losing and having to learn them lessons it's only going to make everyone on the on both teams better um and it does make it more exciting for the fans not knowing what's going to happen it's it's all because like the levels obviously taken such a huge step up um but it's definitely heading in the right direction and i think that's what we want to see more of is those competitive games and those hard fought games. How have you kind of been preparing for Wasp this week? And obviously, they've obviously got some star studded players, like Meg Jones, Ellie Kildon. How tough is it to prepare against some people like that who you don't really know what they're going to do at any given moment? Um, I think it brings the excitement. It it brings the nerves. Like, but I think us just focusing on ourselves and making sure our structure is right, the way we want to play is right. We've got to worry about ourselves, and they could they could do what that like you said they're so unpredictable in especially individuals Ellie Kilda, Meg Jones, Abby Dow um all superstar qualities but they're so unpredictable we could focus all day on them um but that's not what we're wanting to do we're focusing on us we're making sure how we want to play is how we're going to play and we we want to bring it to them you mentioned, obviously, those names. Do you think they're their biggest threat, or do you think it comes from anywhere else? Um, I think they're cracking individuals on and off pitch. Um, obviously, like, played with Meg and um, Ellie, and they're lovely girls both on and off the pitch, and they are they are superstars. They definitely stand out. Um, so, yeah, of course they're a threat, just like anyone on that pitch could be a threat if we turn if they turn up on the day. Um, so they're ones to watch out for, but obviously they've got players on our team that they're going to want to watch out for. So it's just to see who turns it up on the day, really, and it'll be an exciting game to watch. Um, where do you think the game can, is going to be won and lost on the week? And obviously, as a back, you may be thinking in the back line, but <laughs> both sides have got a massive forward pack. Do you think that's going to be where a big, big battle as well? Yeah, I think massively. Like, our forwards... We have got a very strong forward pack, um, but we do want to play back school as well. I think the game will be won on one or lost of whoever comes out with a higher tempo, whoever comes in and won in it more. Um, and I think that's that's the that's the exciting thing is that it's going to be a hard fought game from the middle of the whistle goes, and whoever turns up on the day is going to deserve that that ticket through to the final. Obviously, there's fans back at the Stoop as well on Saturday. How excited are you to be back playing in front of a home crowd? I'm already nervous knowing that the fans are back. Um, I've been nervous for the whole week, but I think it just adds to the atmosphere. It's like I play rugby because you want to make your family proud. They've worked hard for you, like used to take you to training and stuff. So having them sat there and watch, it's it just brings like a different kind of feeling. It it makes you want to go out and and have one of the best games of the season um, and like make them proud. So I think having family there, having fans who have taken their time out to come and support you it's really going to bring that energy for us and it's going to make it's that one percenter i don't even think fans are one percent i think they're like 25 percenter in in why we do it um so having them there and supporting us and and bringing the energy is going to push us through when when we are in the battle obviously it was announced that the final and bits of the same final are going to be covered by BT Sport. How important do you think that is for the growth of the women's game? I think it's huge. Um, and I think the more people that tune in, the more respect they'll have for women's women's rugby. Um, I think this year has been a massive turning point in the fact of like social media and us rugby players coming together to to really support each other, no matter what, like, what team you're on. Um, so I think having it covered is is heading in the right direction um and it's the people at home and the fans who tune in to support us it's it's going to help the respect the level um and the support grow massively so 
thanks a lot for that. Um, really interesting to hear your thoughts on previewing the game and just good luck for the weekend as well. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Sophie Giddy from the Saracens Women and you've been watching the Women's Rugby Show.